In this tutorial, you will learn to customize the V-Ray Sun and Sky system. For this, we will enhance the overall colors and contrast, improve the blending on the horizon and use overrides to further customize the final look. So in this video here, we're going to be discussing a question that was asked a lot already, and that is basically how to customize the V-Ray Sun and Sky system to get from something like this in here, which is the default settings, to something like this, where we can see we have a much nicer overall feeling and image. And the V-Ray Sun and Sky system is a very nice feature, but it has, from my feeling, some kind of limitations with the default settings. For example, it's very difficult to kind of like really show bluish color tones if you're facing your view towards the sun. And sometimes it's difficult to really read or see the clouds in here. So in this one, I went in and customized that a little bit so that we can hopefully get a much nicer looking image. As usual, you can always find all of my scene files on my Patreon together with a whole course on car rendering and a lot of other additional goodies. So you can head on over there if that's interesting for you. Other than that, let's just start and see how we can get from the default V-Ray Sun and Sky system to our customized version here to get more the kind of feeling that we want to show in our images. So this right here would be our starting point and we just have this very standard V-Ray sun and sky system. You can see the sun here is completely dynamic. The sky is basically changing depending on where I position my sun in here. I can basically increase the amount of clouds that I have in my scene and basically has all of the advantages that the V-Ray sun and sky system here offers. Apart from that, I don't really get the kind of look that I want to. So for example, here, I want to have the feeling that the sun is quite low already. It's hitting the ship here from the backside, but I want to have a kind of like evening mood. And this is not really being resembled here at the moment with the standard sun and sky system in here. So we're going to be customizing this a little bit. And by the way, if you want to know on how to make a nice procedural ocean shader, all together with some nice foam effects in here. Then you can check out a video in my channel which basically deals about this topic here separately. So whenever you add a V-Ray sun in your scene, it will ask you if you also want to add a V-Ray sky here in the environment tab. And for exterior scenes, that basically is also a very common workflow. For interior scenes, you normally should rather add this sky in a separate dome light with adaptive sampling because for interior scenes that has some different implications but if you want to know more about this i also have a own dedicated video about this in my channel but for this video and for simplicity let's just use the v-ray sky here in the environment tab also what i normally like to do is to basically just add two simple objects in my scene so let's just for simplicity hide here the ship and then let's add two dummy objects. I just have two spheres in here, one with a reflective material and one with a bright gray diffused material here. And here you can see two things which I normally don't like so much already. And that is how the V-Ray Sun and Sky system by default affects the reflection and the global illumination in here. For the global illumination, I have the feeling that this is from my feeling too dark compared to how bright the sky is that we can see behind here. And I would rather like to brighten up this area here a little bit. And then the reflection here towards the center for my taste is too dark because what we can see here in the background is much brighter. Of course, we're facing towards the sun and this one here would be the opposite direction. But just from a visual standpoint, I would rather like to brighten up those reflections in here so that from a visual standpoint, I get a feeling or an image that looks to my eye at least more correct. But before we start about those details, we first check out here our sky that we can see in the background and we're going to be customizing this a little bit. So now we can open our material editor and we have a bunch of empty slots in here. So let's just drag the sky into one of the empty slots in the material editor. And we could make some adjustments to this right here, but I found the easiest way to do that is to basically do that through a simple color correction here. So we just drag our original sky and put this in a color correction here as the input map. And then we just link this color correction, which I just called sky BG for background. 
we just put this here into our background element again. You can see there's no changes because so far I haven't really done any adjustments here on the color correction node. But that's exactly what we're gonna do now. So if we switch this here to advanced, for example, we can go down with our exposure. You can see that basically affects everything. So also our GI and our reflections at the moment. So I want you to ignore that for now. But we're only going to focus on what we can see here in the background. So what I normally like to do is to basically just go down here with the gamma. So let's use a gamma of 0.6 for example. And now it seems to kind of blow out because we also would need to go down with the intensity here. So let's use for example an intensity of 20. And we can use for example a stronger saturation of 25 and then we can also modify our colors we can do that through the u in here to make some crazy adjustments but let's do some much more subtle adjustments here in the r g and b channels and let's for example boost here the blue gamma to 1.2 and this overall will make our image a little bit more warmish. You can see we get this kind of like nice warmer color tones now in the sky in here or in the clouds rather. And I think this already looks a little bit nicer basically. Of course here those parts we would need to adjust afterwards but at the moment we just entirely focus on our background. So while we're here basically when working with skies it's always a good idea to add a little bit of in here and for this you can use under the atmosphere tab the v-ray aerial perspective i already added that in here i just need to activate that and then once we do this you can see that we have a little bit of fog here overlaying our clouds and it reduces a bit of the contrast so whenever you work with sun and sky system it's always a good idea or habit to also add an aerial perspective in order to get a nicer effect here especially on the horizon line so now we have a background here that looks much more to our liking but what we try to improve would be the foreground because at the moment here we have this very dark reflections on the sphere we also have this very dark global illumination here in the shadow part so i would rather like to brighten up those parts here a lot and for this basically you have to understand that whatever you use here in the background by default is also used for your reflections and your global illumination and we can change that here in the render settings so we can override for example our gi we can also override our reflection and here the reflection for example have been overwritten with this black color so you can see that now our sky here is not really showing up in the reflections anymore so I want to change that. I want to basically now have our sky here showing in the reflections as well. And for this, let's duplicate here our color correction. And let's just basically instance also our original sky into the map in here. Let's zero out all of those values. And let's call this one here sky reflect. And let's put this sky reflect color correction into our reflection and refraction environment as an instance so now once we do this you can see that we have something that shows up here in our environment i seem to have forgotten here to zero out this gamma adjustments that we did here on the blue channels let's reduce this for example to 1.05 so it doesn't get so yellowy and now we can basically try to boost this a little bit for example also to a value of 150 because i normally like to kind of match like whatever we can see in here to the colors that we can see here in the background here on the edges maybe it gets a little bit too bright let's go back a little bit here so that this blends here a little bit more nice but i think like this we have a sky that basically also reflects here believably in our ocean and in our dummy sphere and it kind of looks the same like the sky that we can see here in our background so now we also need to adjust here our global illumination let's also duplicate this here and let's call this here sky gi 
Let's also instance this into our GI environment. And we can see this now brightens up here our global illumination. We can maybe boost this even a little bit more, 150 or maybe 100. 40 so that we have the side here not so completely dark anymore and it looks a bit more believable on how this sphere here is integrated into this environment we can also basically reduce here the gamma adjustments we could boost here for example the saturation so now we have much more of these bluish color tones here coming through so you can basically really fine tune the gi on how it basically here illuminates your scene. I think this is of course way too strong. Let's use for example something like 25 so that we can get a little bit of these bluish color tones here showing up in the global illumination. And by this hopefully get an even more believable integration. So now the whole process is basically finished. We can now hide here our dummies and we can show our ship again. You can see we have a much nicer image now compared to before where we have this kind of nice color tones here in the sky. We have nice reflections on our ocean and also on our ship and everything looks and feels correct because we basically adjusted this here with our dummy objects so that we can get a nice and believable integration from this angle in here and by this hopefully get a very close to finished result. So that concludes this tutorial. If you like this content, I would be very happy if you can leave me a like because that helps a lot with the YouTube algorithm. Or if you can let me know in the comments what could be improved. Also, if you want to support this channel, you can find all of my scene files over on my Patreon together with a whole course on car rendering and a lot of other additional goodies. So you can check this out if that has any additional value for you. Otherwise, see you next tutorial. Take care and see you soon.